We are live. Welcome to Iron Fist Season 1 Thoughts. So, spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this season. I will not be spoiling anything MCU that came out after this season. And, yeah, so, next week will be Defenders and two weeks from then Punisher Season 1. Two weeks from that, Punish uh, Jessica Jones Season 2. Two weeks from that, Luke Cage Season 2. And then in either one week or two weeks after that, Iron Fist 2. Two weeks after that, Daredevil Season 3. Two weeks after that, Punisher Season 2. And finally, two weeks after that, Jessica Jones Season 3. So I have put some links in the description box to videos that provide good analysis of the season. Uh, so, you know. And, and they don't spoil anything that came after this season. I'm going to try not to restate what I what they say. So, I did not like very much of this season. There's going to be a lot of riffing MST3K in this video. I don't want to talk too much negative without that kind of thing anymore. If that is not something you're up for, I mean, you're free to hate watch, but I want you to know what you're signing up for here. If you're someone that cares deeply about this season, I don't hate you, I don't think you're stupid, and I don't think anyone should. Not for liking this season. So, starting with the first episode, Snow Gives Way. And for those not aware, as far as I understand, every single episode of the season is named after a martial arts move. So, yeah, we open on Danny walking through the city, barefoot, in dirty clothes, listening to hip-hop. We wouldn't be much of a white dude appropriating non-white culture without it. And, yeah, I immediately see what people mean about the fighting. So when he's talking to his childhood friends who now run his dad's company, you know, at, at first, I was like, why is it taking him so long for Danny to just say something that proves that he really is Danny? And then I realized that the scene would actually end without him proving it. Like, three minutes of the, the three of them talking, nothing was accomplished that wasn't accomplished in the first minute or so. You know, like... And, and they even, like, let, let's see, what was it, why was it they, that the security was slow, was, was it maybe, like, one of the phones didn't work, so they had to go and get some, ex or was that a different scene this season? Any, anyway, yeah, just, like, in the first minute or so, it's like, you know, he says, I'm, it's Danny, I know you think I've been dead for 15 years, but it's really me, and they say they don't believe him, and, yeah, for... It goes on for two minutes, two more minutes after that, without anything being accomplished. I, if I were to, yeah, maybe, did they have, like, no, they, they have to do at least 13 episodes, but I don't think they have to make the individual episodes a specific length. Anyway, yeah, what I would have done would be just have, like, have him come in and, you know, he says, it's me, Danny. Uh, you know, and just just have a, a line or two establishing they've been friends since childhood. You know, they th they think he died 15 years ago in a plane crash. And just like, let's see, if if there was some kind of yeah yeah have have like ah uh, yeah I'm trying to think of just. Yeah, uh, okay, I can't think of a good one, but have some line that it ends on with, where he expresses that, you know, it, yeah, yeah, he's he's like, so, now that I'm back, I guess you're going to give me the 51% of the company, right? And smash cut, and the door is slamming shut behind him, and he's like, okay, you know, the, you don't have to have three whole minutes of just, no, like, over the course of the rest of the season, the the show did things that made me care about Danny, Ward, and Joy, but this was a very rough opening. Like, this was not the way to do it. You know, I honestly, at first, I thought that 
like Ward was gonna be, you know, un until I realized that Harold was still alive, and then it was pretty clear. Okay, I guess he's the villain, but then some of the time he is, and then some of the time he's not. Anyway, yeah, like I I thought Ward was basically gonna be the main antagonist of of the entire season. Now, yeah, yeah, the Ward calls security but gets no answer. And, yeah, just rewrite it to where he does, so security shows up sooner. And, let's see. I guess that was what I had to say about that. So, yeah, you know, we meet Big Al. I was going to say positive depiction of an unhoused individual. More like this, please. But then he says you have to piss and choose to get rid of bad juju. Not every unhoused individual has mental health problems. And later, he's like he dies from an overdose. Plenty of them don't take hard drugs. And, you know. Let's see. And and you know if you're going to depict like that is this season really does not have very much empathy for those with mental health problems. I thought that was really off-putting. And Danny talks to Joy, freaking her out more. Why did he admit to breaking in? And and Danny meets Colleen, uh, uh, Jessica Henwick, who also uh, I want to say her character name was Bugs in Matrix Resurrections. And yeah, she's the first person to be nice to him. You know, he she thinks that he's like performing the the. I, I'm not gonna... I'd look really stupid if I tried to say what it is and get it wrong, but he's doing, like, he's not doing fight stuff, he's doing, like, you know, yeah, stuff that they train you for in certain Asian cultures, East Asian cultures, and, yeah, you know, he learned it at Kunlun, and she thinks that he's doing it for money, you know, to like a, like a street performer, basically. And and she apparently hasn't spoken Mandarin since childhood. And Joy and Ward both laugh at uh, calling Danny an insane homeless acrobat. Wow. Danny stealing the car is kind of funny. And then Danny grabs his gun, point it at Ward's head, and mock executes him. So... At this point in the show, I hated Ward since the flashback to Monopoly, so I kind of enjoyed it, but, you know, and Danny lists some of all the cruelty Ward inflicted and then drives fast, scaring him, and, yeah, at this point, I noted, can this be the rest of the show, Danny getting revenge on Ward? And, you know, ultimately, you find out that the reason that he was so cruel was the, you know, Harold, his own father, taught him cruelty by abusing him. But yeah, it's just like, yeah. Um, let's see. I have some. Yeah. Um, I have more things to say about. Yeah, and we see Big Al brought Danny food, although you know it was apparently like thrown in the trash. And he talks about how everything was good when everyone is hunter gathers. And Colleen trains class, loves seeing badass women. And she threatens to hit him with a practice sword. And says, no, no, trust me, it can actually, you know. He's like, that, that's just a practice sword. Clearly you haven't been hit with a practice, you know, yeah. I, I, I quite like Jessica Henwick. I hope to one day see her in something that just is actually absolutely amazing and really, you know. But yeah, I, I, I legitimately enjoy her in, in this season and Matrix for. And the security guards come after Danny, including into a celebration by East Asians, who are literally props for the rich white guy who's already appropriating East Asian culture. Wonderful. Ward goes to his dad, Harold. This show has now brought back 50% of the characters that were thought to be dead. Like, literally, at this point, the only two characters thought to be dead that actually are, are the, the parents of Danny. 
And the episode ends with Joy putting sleeping medicine in what Danny drinks. He wakes up in an institution where they pretend he's been for a long time. I do want to see him released from there, but not because I care about him as a character and that or that I'm that emotionally invested. It's just because it's clearly unfair, and I don't think anyone who doesn't need to be should be in an institution. And then we also see, you know, this is yet another piece of American fiction that you know thing that that depicts an institution for for people with mental health issues as just hell on earth and it's just what uh, what was that thing cuz there was like there was this one movie where i was like see finally a positive depiction of mental health care I feel like making a joke that oh right that doesn't exist, but I think I think I did legitimately see one. I just I don't at all remember you know just off the top of my head. A couple of other examples: Terminator Two, the um, yeah, several of the uh, Nightmare on Elm El uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, three and seven for sure. So that's like, does that count as two? Then there is, of course, glass. You know, it's just like not every place is like this, you know. And while it is obviously frustrating for the viewer, I do understand why Danny didn't get shoes and a change of clothes at a homeless shelter for 15 years. He hasn't needed those things. But why does he walk into his father's old building and expect to just be able to talk to the person in charge? What in the last 15 years has made him think that was reasonable? You know, we find out in episode 2 he does have a passport that has a different name on it. Did he fly in dirty clothes without shoes on? I just, I find that very hard to believe, you know, it's just... <sighs> I, I get what they're what they're going for. I see all they all they all they had to do was have him be like you know, have someone ask, Did you did you fly looking like that? And he was like, Well no, but I just feel more comfortable like this now. There it is, you know, but yeah. And yeah, so I'm just gonna quote uh, a cricket crick a critic. As someone who's loved all the other Netflix Marvel shows up to this point, I felt that every decision they made here was wrong. And that brings us to... Holy crap, I didn't expect to be talking so long about the first episode. Episode 2, Shadowhawk Takes Flight. So, Simon wants to kill Danny. He must have been watching the pilot, too. And... Yeah, to, to expand on, like that, you know, I wonder if American filmmakers will ever tire of making mental institutions look like hell on earth, and patients come across as all dangerous to themselves and others. It's all too rare to get an actual positive, realistic depiction. Yes, it is bad in some places, and in the past, it was basically all places. But in many places, you'll find out, which by researching, the people working there work hard to make things be as good as possible for the people in the institution, and uh, yeah, for them to be patients in the institution. Where was your mother? Kind of up in the air. Who you calling a donkey? Someone that is not currently drinking a Pepsi? Apologize. Guys, guys, calm down. Is there any way a Pepsi could solve this? Can we get Kendall Jenner on this? I need three cc's of Pepsi. Stat! Soda emergency! We have a soda emergency! And I thought Colleen was basically nice, but she yells at the people she's training. And, yeah, two fight scenes in this episode so far. One was just training, but we only knew that afterwards. That is really some... I hope that trope is some... It is at some point retired. It can be exciting, even though we know it's only training. Just look at the first Matrix movie. And the other was because one of the mental patients wanted him to apologize for being alive. We're two episodes into an action show and it's struggling this much to conjure up action scenes. He actually held a gun to my head. Well, in his defense, I only just met you and I already want to do that. I swear the orderlies are incapable of interacting with a patient without using violence. But sir, you never leave the penthouse. I guess he thinks the time's right to retell the legend of King Leonidas to inspire some troops. I was wondering if I 
could ask you an odd question. If you got an entire ant colony to all balance on the heads of pins, and a train leaves the atmosphere, this go on. This goes on for a while. Do, do you have a pen? Oh, we dead know a lot. Yeah, they have tons of pop quizzes in the afterlife. The harder somebody hit me, the more things came into focus. Danny, I want you to know, anytime you need things to come into focus, I will hit you as hard as you want me to, and harder still. If you sign these, I will leave you this. This is a crude drawing of the Hamburglar, my best work so far, and there's more where that came from. I mean, Colleen was not actually going to further investigate Danny and the institution. You know, Ward is making her curious about it. If he left it alone, nothing would happen. Special delivery from Joy Meacham. She requested specifically that I not hit you, and she paid me enough to make sure that I wouldn't. Is it Joy? No Joy. Seriously, M&Ms. Nuts. Why not have it be an incredibly specific drawing or answer to specific questions or something? And certainly if you were going to go with the M&Ms things, you know, she says that they would eat them together, all but the brown ones, and he kept the brown ones. She thinks that's definite proof. Seems to me like it would have made just as much sense if he kept a bunch of ones other than the brown ones, you know, for himself to eat. Why not have it be that he would only eat the brown ones and he would let her eat all of the other ones, you know, because, you know, yeah, maybe he was the only one who liked the brown ones. Then him sending all but the brown ones works, well, better than if not, like now. And they do later, they, they uh, was I think it was like a, a pot that he wrote and there was like a thumbprint or a fingerprint or something on there. Why not just go directly to that? Why not have him, like, the message that he sends to Joy could be, the, the you know, there, um, we made a pot together when we were so-and-so old, you know, uh, I guess he wouldn't, I mean, I, he's, he's supposed to be smart. Couldn't he have figured out about the fingerprint? And the doctor asks Danny, where will you? He literally already told you. Be more like Dad. Grow some balls. Joy, you know full well that he has been trying to do that for years. It doesn't take. It's not clear if it's the soil, the seed, or what. Be more sensitive about it. And the doctor's asking Danny, what is the Iron Fist? A very powerful force for pleasure. It's it's a sex toy. It either goes to the wrist or all the way to the elbow. What are you talking about? What were you planning to do? Play a game of Uno, not kill him. And Danny's beaten by the three dangerous patients. The orderly just accepts it. They're working for Ward. It just gets more and more ridiculous. And like... It, Think about how easy it would have been to just have it be they have, like, an institution that is especially bad. and Because it's, like, public information that he gets, you know, this is, this is a, yeah, this is a normal place. You know, they're, yeah, have it, have it be that these rich people have a, uh, an institution where they send their, you know, people who have some kind of influence and could hurt them. And have it be there, but Harold is specifically, wow, I didn't expect the doctor to try to help him. You know, just, is it really that? And and then it could, you know, have it be the orderlies, not the patients that are trying to, to beat him. It's just, yeah. I do understand why Danny's able to activate the Iron Fist and more overpower them. He said that earlier that the harder he gets gets hit, the, hard, the better he could focus. This is the first time he's been hit really hard since he was put on the medic medication, which is what makes it harder for him to focus. Earlier he dodged the attack, and it is obviously quite satisfying to see him use the power on the orderly, and I can understand people who enjoy seeing him beat up the patients since they were beating him up. So you're telling me that Harold could put up cameras all over this institution, but it's impossible for him to get a doctor working on Danny that will do what he wants with Danny, despite how this place is full of corruption and there's violence all over the place. 
Yeah, I know a lot of MS3, MST3K and riffing on this of this episode. I gotta keep myself entertained doing this slog. And that brings us to the third episode. Rolling Thunder Cannon Punch. Let's see. Yeah, Shannon and the others breaks right in, calling fights them off. Danny is right under the ceiling, dripping. Someone watched Mission Impossible 1996. And Harold sleeps in a glass box. Is that why he hasn't aged in 15 years? And yeah. Harold thinks Danny can help against the hand. So for those of you keeping track, if you're playing the home game, the Netflix Marvel organizations fighting the hand, which are apparently all completely independent of each other, even though they have the exact same goal, Daredevil Season 2 introduced the chase, and now this introduces Kunlun and the, the monks there. While I realize it might be accurate to the comic, I feel like all they had to do was say that the monk order, and thus Danny, doesn't already want to fight the hand, then you can have Danny be convinced by Harold, and, you know, maybe he knows about the chase, but just, yeah, I know, I know. If you're a comic purist, you're, you want to tear either your own or my hair out right now, but I'm just saying, I and I get it, you know, for comic books, you do have to, you know, why, yeah, it, it, comic books get complicated, and I don't, I don't think that's a problem, but here, like, it's just, yeah, or or maybe the chaste, maybe maybe the whole Kunlun, the, the monks there, that's an offshoot of the chaste or something. I, I don't think this season mentions the chaste at all. Which, you know, to be fair, like, I, does Claire know about the chaste? I'm not sure that she found out about the chaste in, or at least about the name chaste. Anyway. And Danny plays loud music at Colleen's and she's like, now I only want you gone. Danny finds Jerry calls her J Money for short. As always, I enjoy a Jerry Hogarth scene. Finally he got a shave and a haircut. Well, it looks like he had them all cut, but yeah. Joy puts down Ward. Why is it that like every fourth scene they share, she has confidence when talking to him, and the rest of the time she seems like the weaker of the two? She showed confidence when telling him to grow balls. That was the only time that entire scene come to think of it. That was also like, wow, uh, I get, did, did one of the writers show up late and just really loved this line about growing balls? And the others were like, uh, oh, okay, fine. It's, we... The script is done now, though. Gotta get it to, to the shooting. Uh, yeah. I realize it would have been awkward to edit it out, but I believe it would have been less awkward than keeping it in. And... Yeah, we see that it's... That, that Gao talks to Harold. And that, that was also... I, I, that's not... An issue with this show, but I did like in Daredevil season two. Just oh right, right, yeah. We it's confirmed in this season. Yeah, yeah, that was probably set up for this season, and we found out we find out in this season that she's like an offshoot of the hand. And since yeah, I I don't know, maybe she's a fingernail, and. Yeah, so, you know, Danny helps the training session at first, and then he attacks a student and gets kicked out by Colleen. See, I this should have been the first time that we really see Colleen's temper, I think. She explains to him that he she understands why he sometimes does this, and I do too, but I think the show has too many different conflicts that he's involved in. I think the season should either focus, you know, these, these first couple of episodes focus a lot on, you know, company, job, living area, relationship with childhood friends things, you know, that, that entire package, or these mental and emotional issues, you know, both of these type of problems, it's just, it feels like every so often the show remembers, oh, right, Danny, uh, emotional issues, right? He's got emotional issues. Okay, we gotta, you know, 
but yeah, I uh, I saw someone. I I didn't note myself when it, but it was. Is it like the first four or five episodes of the show? Is him trying to get the the you know the power at the company that he has by virtue of you know it was in part his father's. It's just, it's just yeah. You're really considering this, aren't you? I'm just tired of a lot of things, including the show. And Danny goes to get the records, and the guy hits him, grabs a large container of industrial alcohol. I mean, when you're thirsty, you're thirsty. Isn't it obvious? He's not your brother, I'm not your sister, but we are fans of Marvel Netflix, we don't want you here. And Colleen and we visit the Underground Fight Club. I do really appreciate that it's not an easy fight for her. She wins, but she does also get hit. And the clay pot is accepted as proof. I guess the reason why Ward doesn't just smash it on the ground is they could sue him for destruction of personal property. I feel like that's not good for the company, and if he's really correct that it's going to be ten years before anything happens with the suit, that's the lesser loss. Once again, love any scene featuring Jerry Hogarth, and the scene ends with she and Danny having won at least a partial victory, and as such, the team of lawyers employed by Ward and Joy are greatly dismayed and surprised by this turn of events, and will murmur to that effect. And Danny leaves the office... Oh, wait. Yes, I think, it, yeah, Danny, you know, someone leaves the office, looks at pictures of both Danny's father, Harold. Harold, really, in, in that photo, has a striking resemblance to Bill Maher. I'm... That can't be intentional, right? They're not very alike. All we've seen Harold do thus far in the season is be verbally abusive to people with less power and money than him, live completely separate from people with actual problems, stick around way past his time, rant about how serious dangerous forces that don't exist in the real world. You know what? I take it back. He is Bill Maher. And that brings us to the fourth episode, Eight Diagram Dragon Palm. If you want more detailed critiques of Bill Maher, uh, some more news, and uh, the Cavernacle. Danny lands hard. Show's over? Nope. Interplane. Ah. You pushed me off the building? Man, Ward really hates Danny. Apparently he's been watching the show. You were dead. I saw pictures. So this is a world with magic without Photoshop? I mean, keeping in mind, he's talking about recently. He's not talking about like 15 years ago, which, you know, okay, sure, but today, like... And... Maybe we should give him back his dad's office. Or maybe I should shut my big mouth. And he gets the 51% back, which, you know, <laughs> made me wonder, what does this character have left to accomplish in this season? I guess the hand who he used to not believe existed. And Danny has to give a speech. Any pr at a press conference, and of course, it does get somewhat off the rails, as MCU press conferences are wont to. Ward even tries to be his stain or roadie and tell him to stick to the cards. Danny wants to peer through the peer deal. Danny wants to hug. Jerry does not. Oh, no. We don't do that. Can she please be a regular character? Let's see. I'm not going to spoil She-Hulk. I'm just going to say that men trying to hug or, or touch their female lawyer, I, I didn't even realize before watching these shows that that was really a thing. Like, I guess because they think, well, a woman, I'm entitled to her body? Because, like, who hugs their lawyer? Like, what is that? Like, that just... Wow. Yeah. Anyway. 
it was it was the 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 lawyer refusing that was funny in both shows. And Danny demands they sell the drug at cost, pointing out they will make profits elsewhere, something that doesn't cause misery. Progressive politics and business love to see it. Is this why people say he's bratty? Are all of those people mainstream media or people who believe mainstream media over progressive media like TYT? This guy's twice your size. Did you forget last fight? She wants to add another fight. Holy crap. And that is like, I, I get it. She wants to make money, which is also like, what happened to the whole fight club thing anyway? Did that just not like, yeah. And every moment was a struggle, just like watching these first four episodes. It made me what I am today. So they deserve the blame, not Lobchevsky. And Joy's attempted kidnap. The guy badly wants to ask Danny some questions. So these guys walk around with axes inside their suits, and it's way cool. But when I do it, yeah. Such a bad joke. I quite like the editing of the elevator fight coming to the outside when it starts traveling downwards. Split screen cut to the outside, then the elevator door, uh, elevator doors open. Just yeah. And Ward tells the reporter about the drug price, and we find out the journalist works for Ellison. She insists that she has a better story than Karen Page. She demands Karen's front page. That's Karen Page's page. And later we do we see him reading the newspaper. I don't think they even did give give the front page. So I guess she was wrong, or did they did the did the prop guy not get the memo? Or so? yeah. So the man from the Yang clan is told that the hand made Rand hand the peer to the hand. Damn. And so yeah, Harold gets gets a treat. So he you know, first they allow him to see his daughter through the window, and then they let him kill the guy who hit Joy. That brings us to the fifth episode. Underleaf Pluck Lotus. And I, I gotta say, this the, the opening here was there was there was some kind of kind of fun the uh, oh wow. No, I wrote that I thought it was ridiculous. Okay, anyway, it's a it's an it's an interesting or noteworthy way that the you know we open on the three business women walking out to sell. At first, it looks you know oh like it's this um it's it's that drug that they mentioned last episode, but it turns out to be heroin and yeah I I quite like the cut that shows that the building they're selling in is abandoned not busy like you know when they're in a building and you know it's this she's well dressed and she's talking about you know she sounds like one of these I I forget what they're called but you know yeah when when a person goes out to try to explain uh you know a, a new drug kind of you know yeah and yeah, you know, at first we the the close-ups make it seem like it's you know, or or hide the fact that it's this abandoned building, and so we assume oh it's you know, and and I forget yeah I think we see them even at first like leave through the Rand oh right now I remember why I thought it was ridiculous so the door opens and all three of them come walking out and then one of them keeps walking straight and. Two of them walk off in you know left and right. I, I don't know. Is this is a little? It was a little much. Danny's informs us he'll deal with it. Deal with it. You know your predecessor showed so much more respect. Did I just reference a Matrix sequel just to keep myself sane? Send help. Do you know how crazy that sounds? Have you completely forgotten who you're talking to? And we see Claire train with Colleen. And we did see her grab one of those little you know notes with the with the phone number and such. 
you know, for martial arts training, I think that was at the end of Luke Cage season one, and it is like, you know, yeah, I, how, how much are you going to put up, you know, th after three shows where she is put in danger, you know, by people with, with, you know, I, I guess not always by the people with powers, but you know, she keeps encountering people with powers, and she keeps getting in danger, makes sense for her to get martial arts training, and of course, like, you know, for here, for this show, you know, one of the main characters has, you know, runs a dojo, so makes sense, yeah. I did find it funny how awkward, finally, intentionally, uh, so, the interaction is between Colleen, Claire, and Danny, you know, yeah, so the 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 order of takeout and these people coming in is like, wow, this is really extravagant. You know, it's not a date. Oh, it's not a date unless you want it to be. And you know, she and and Claire's like, I would love to try some of this. And and Danny's like, ah, I mean, we kind of need some privacy. And and Colleen's like, sure, take a seat. And, you know, afterwards, she grabs four boxes of food. To be fair, knowing her, she'll definitely not waste any. And it's not like they need it all of that food. And Joy and Ward talk about Danny's video. He doesn't want to go along, so he gets the text telling him to, and he flips the bird, and it flies. I just want you to watch my back, you know? If it gets hit a couple of times, let me know. I want the leak under my sink fixed. You think a landlord in America is going to do that kind of thing? Wow, this really is a piece of fantasy fiction. And... I may lose my lunch watching you disgrace my katana with your wuxia bullshit. It's meant to be used the, the Japanese way. I do really appreciate that they make that distinction a lot of American fiction doesn't and they will show show off using the nunchucks fellow chucker huh the fight with you know Iron Fist when he finds the chemist isn't bad and certainly I appreciate the unusual lighting you know the hand they attack season two of Daredevil took a lot of screen time that could have gone to the puncher and Rabadon has had his daughter kidnapped by the Hand. Claire confirms this is their M.O. The Hand is involved with everything. The Hand has its hand in everything. And Madame Gao realizes she's up against the Iron Fist. Maybe she really should have gone to China or much further than that. Seriously, she's still in New York as we saw in Daredevil Season 2. Maybe she's just not that good at geography. And Gao's walking stick is a blade in a sheath. That was really cool to, yeah. So of the four shows and five seasons leading up to The Defenders, two of them are about the hand. And, yeah, um, I would be extremely surprised if they don't turn out to be the villains of The Defenders, and that's why they weren't defeated in Daredevil Season 2. And this, you know, I appreciate all the development that they get before Defender starts, but it is kind of annoying to have entire seasons of the, these Netflix Marvel shows not culminate in a definite conclusion, whether it be a loss or a win for the good guys. I'm not saying that the following are perfect, but by the end of Daredevil, Daredevil Season 1, they had put Wilson Fisk in jail when the season started. People weren't even saying his name out loud, even though... You know, everyone knew someone had to be, you know, it, it wouldn't make sense for it to, you know, otherwise, why aren't there, like, battles between the organized crime families? By the end of Jessica Jones Season 1, she takes out Kilgrave so he can never hurt anyone ever again. By the end of Luke Cage Season 1, Cornell is dead, so is Domingo. Uh, uh, Stryker is badly injured, Mariah is taking over, despite at the start of the season she didn't want anything directly to do with it. She didn't even want to know details, and yeah, you know, I I will grant some characters are very different by the end of, of this season, but, like, I, I don't think there's enough plot changes over the course of this season. Not, not enough accomplished. 
and we see Ward. This is where the the pill problem starts. Let's see. At the end of episode five, if I recall correctly, at least. That brings us to season one, episode six. Immortal emerges from the cave. Okay, I appreciate the dark comedy of this guy killing an entire room full of people and then performing karaoke. Doubt leads to death. I don't know. <coughs> I got better. Alright then, I believe you. Danny challenges the hand str strongest warriors versus the Russians. Not bad. The element of him hearing the Thunderer and adjust adjusting worked for me. He completely, like, but at the end of this episode, the Thunderer turns his back on Danny. I don't think that's even brought up at any point later in the... Was, was he the one that he felt he should apologize to in the finale? Anyway. And Danny has to fight the biologist, Alessa, who, uh, you know, pretends to seduce him and then poisons him, hence the spider tattoo and her using a needle on spiders in her first scene. I really appreciate there's a difference between how she fights and the Russians. And it is kind of like, yeah, isn't she, she's a little, she's a tad small of stature. So the, the idea of, although, you know, this is still a show that has women that aren't the, the most... Like, uh, I don't want to sound like one of the misogynists who say that women can't fight, but, uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess I just wish the, the show was consistent in either direction. But, but yeah, I, I think the idea is supposed to be, you know, oh, she's, she's a little smaller, she's not strong enough to take on a man, certainly not one that has the iron fist, so instead she seduces him and, and poisons him. And the karaoke guy, awesome. Some pretty good action in this episode, and each fight requires Danny to employ different tactics, and he does. Karaoke guy insists on using weapons, Danny won't, and uses the difference to his advantage. He lands a blow the karaoke guy couldn't block because he had a staff length weapon. And the karaoke guy can't use arm length, arms length weapon in that other place because of construction stuff. Ward's pill addiction feels forced. I still don't really under yeah i guess it's later explained that it's the stress of keeping uh what's the word keep uh, keeping harold secret from joy and this whole it, yeah it just felt like it felt like it came out of nowhere like they could have had him like take a pill in in the previous episodes but it's just sort of like near the end of episode 5 you know he he takes some pills, and Joy finds him, and he's... yeah. What do I care about honor? No honor. No respect. At least they do still have clownlessness. So, yeah. So, I watched the video talking about the first six episodes by the What The Flick people. Uh, hmm, I guess I could put that in... Yeah, yeah, I think I will. I'll uh, I'll put the links to those in the description box as well. And just real quick, we'll take a moment. There we go. So that brings us to episode seven: felling tree with roots. I have nothing to do with Danny Rand. Harold, we have a problem. Not gonna lie, that made me laugh out loud. Why didn't you summon the Iron Fist? I can't. Well, they say every man eventually has performance issues. Harold moving bodies while discussing them, letting go of one so it hits with a thud. Is this the comedy episode? I don't know how much more of this I can take. I mean, I agree. It started really badly. I feel like the season is picking up at least somewhat. Yeah, actually, come to think of it, I think I started liking the show a lot more when, when the hand became a bigger part. 
and all the drama with the job and such just again I understand apparently it is accurate to the comics one of the more recent versions of Danny Rand had that issue maybe it's compelling in the comics I don't think it was particularly compelling here especially like just yeah what's that to remind me of my mistakes I wonder what part of his body he cut off to atone for Van Helsing we know he lost an eye for the mistake of 300 I can handle a few stitches. Whoops. Okay, it's settled. This is the comedy episode. Does she run the best little whorehouse in the hand? Okay, I'm sure nobody would be noticed, but on more than one occasion... I, I guess, okay, maybe just twice. Colleen takes a sip, and then it cuts, and we never see her swallow, and just really cracked me up. One of them, she keeps her mouth closed for maybe 10, 15 seconds after, and I kept hoping for an honest-to-God spit take. And Colleen confirms she keeps people at bay with Persona. And Danny and Colleen have sex. I appreciate that... You know, this is not one of those where, like, someone manipulated or tricked or something. They, they do actually have feelings for each other, and, yeah. Danny Rand became Randy Dan. And Ward shows up to Harold, who's in the middle of removing the teeth. Ward is about to vomit, tries to use the wastebasket, but there's a finger in there. I appreciate that a lot of the humor of this comedy episode is very dark. And then he finds pills in the car. If he actually passed out from the pills in the car with the bags of bodies that would have been hilarious and he thinks that the body talks to him a smoker is a smoker when the chips are down and buddy your chips are down how long have you been up out of bed 20 minutes erect I think we need to call a doctor And Danny uses the iron fist to slide down the elevator shaft. I honestly thought maybe he couldn't use the iron fist anymore now that the Thunderer turned his back on him and that was why he claimed to not be able to use it when talking to Harold. Ward, I love you. Lack of ball growing skills notwithstanding. I know many of you are not happy with me. I mean, I appreciate you taking accountability, but again, the show is picking up. Why attack now? What makes you think you can stop it? Oh, I guess I need better lighting on my face. And he steps forward. As you can see now, I am a straight white cis man. I believe I can do anything that minorities can't. And the hatchet men attack the plant. Quick, clever. If you were not yet convinced that this is the comedy episode, the goofy faces that Harold and Ward pull as Ward stabs Harold should leave no doubt. Oh, when your father asks you, you can hardly be convinced to dump bodies, but when you're dumping the body of your own father, suddenly there's no problem, huh, Ward? Fun isn't something you consider when ridding a show of one of its best elements, but this does put a smile on my face. And that brings us to episode 8, The Blessing of Many Fractures. Pan from mail to phone, grabbed by hand with knife. Suspenseful. And then she's grabbed from behind. Harold? Maud? And we see that it was Colleen who grabbed Claire. I guess she was also the, with, the, with the phone? Eh. You don't want to go in there. Go in the bathroom like a normal person. What if you won't talk? She'll talk. She'll sing. She'll dance. It doesn't suck. It blows. It's a long way to China. It's a long way to go. 
I'm sorry, it's alright. About 30% of the interactions of the show is people yelling at each other anyway. Ironic, isn't it? Nah, just coincidental. Ward imagines there's blood on his shirt sleeve. He looks horrified. I mean, obviously he knows it can't be true that he didn't change shirts since last night. That would be so tacky. What is he, not rich? Danny, Colleen, and Claire fly on a private jet. I wouldn't think that any of them would be okay with worsening climate change, but I guess with all the bullshit the show peddles, they aren't worried about emissions. Danny Rand got some is written all over your face. Claire, we talked about you sharpieing people's faces. I really appreciate seeing Claire help Danny with his trauma. I'm sure she learned this as a nurse and she might have to do this for a patient. And there are a lot of people who joke about it in the media. It does actually work. We need positive depictions of it so it becomes more widely accepted. You know, it's I, I get it. It makes you feel vulnerable and we, you know, in the West we're trained as a culture that vulnerability is automatically a bad thing. But, you know, everybody needs help sometimes. I'm not universally despised. By the audience? Oh, yes, you are. In this building. Oh. You will be... Not yet, anyway. So you do know. Over a little money. A hundred million dollars is a little to you. Tax the rich. And Joy has blackmail material on the board. I had a private investigator do this a while ago. She was quite good when she was sober. Jessica Jones! That's a show I could be watching right now. Ward, I love you. Please, there is nothing you could say that would ever change that. I murdered our father. When I said nothing ever, what I really meant was... I don't know anyone as brilliant, as fearless. I mean, not since Dad died, which I know you had nothing to do with. Everything's your fault. So I guess when she's a long geographical distance away from her students, the abuse she normally dishes out to them goes to her partner. Ward hallucinates right before they enter the elevator. That's odd. Usually the blood gets off at the second floor. Very cool sword fight between Colleen and one of the hand. And Danny fights a guy who's like drink. I guess he's using Drunken Master. I, I have to admit, I'm not that familiar with the. I've, I've seen some of them. I'm I'm familiar with some Bruce Lee. You know, Enter the Dragon is awesome. Uh, I watched the one with Chuck Norris. I forget what it's called. I some some parts of it are good. Certainly, the fighting is. You know, not disparaging anyone's ability to fight in those movies. Um. But yeah, I, I'm i guessing Drunken Master. And we see that the poison Gao, Gao's guards use, you know, yeah, they poisoned their weapons, and, you know, it was her poison that killed the, the, the pilot, and later we find out it was Harold's idea. That brings us to episode 9, The Mistress of All Agonies. Harold, whose name is spelled almost like Harold Messenger, comes back to life in the water. It looks like it's a surprise to him, and I'm guessing it will be for Ward. It can't, it can't be supposed to be a surprise for us, the audience, right? I mean, he's come back before, why wouldn't he again? In conclusion, I also don't understand why Harold is surprised, nor especially why Ward is presumably going to be. If you really didn't want Harold to come back, you should have, like, weighed him down, not just put him in the water. Like, just, yeah. Harold seems confused as he walks into the water spring from the fire hydrants. I don't know, maybe it's a geographical thing. Someone really needs to tell him that this is Sparta. This is my fault? And Joy realizes she's talking to an eight-year-old. Danny, you were literally told that what you're doing at the company is not being taken well. At least he does apologize. Let's 
other than that the show really wants her to speak, why aren't they covering Gao's mouth? I guess I just answered my own question. I mean, if they're worried that she will need something, don't sh don't you think she'll cry out non-verbally? It's not like she won't be able to breathe as long as they don't also cover her nose. With that said, the scenes of her messing with their heads are entertaining. You know, Danny, if you agree to work for the hand, they could make money hand over fist. I am not above shoving a sweaty sock in your mouth to shut you up. Some people pay a considerable amount of money for that privilege. The shoving of the sock or having the sock shoved? Yes. I guess the reason for there being a window in the door to the biology lab is so it's possible to break without the use of iron fists. Or th that is possible to break without the use of iron fist is so the woman working there can spot Danny through the window. I mean, I, f I feel like it would have been better just, you know, just have it be there's no window, or at least he has to use the iron fist to break it, and he's seen as he does that instead of through the window right after, like, just, yeah, I, I really don't. Because, cause, you know, if, if it's been a while since you watched this episode, he just uses his elbow. Like, he does the thing, and it's like, this is like a top security building, though. That, yeah. Am I a monster ward? Is that what you think? Yes, definitely. He knows martial arts, has a knife, and is definitely close enough to use it. I don't, I don't, and I can't. Pissing him off is the smart thing to do. You'd think Ward was better at lying, considering he's been a businessman for so many years. Harold actually apologizes to Ward. Honestly, this is a kind of interesting turn of events. Him developing a conscience, and then, you know, later he turns out to also have trouble controlling his violent urges. And Colleen was poisoned by the cut. Very cool and tense when the hand come for Gao. There has to be a way to kill him. Maybe if you hit him hard enough with his Father of the Year award. And Bakudo talks Danny through healing Colleen. I do kind of appreciate that this is a world where every new character, there's like a 40 to 50% chance they know martial arts. Which brings us to the 10th episode, Black Tiger Steals Heart. I kind of liked uh, Harold explaining what it was like being dead. And Harold still has Kyle's body in the room. It's in a glass container. Yeah, I, I do think this is an interesting twist to his character. His violence, though brutal, used to be strategic. Now he's struggling to control himself after the second resurrection. Or the second coming, if you will. Man. People gotta watch... I mean, hardcore Christians watching this show have to be like... We have, we have waited for over 2,000 years, or is it less than 2,000? Anyway, yeah, yeah, because it's like birth of Christ. He died like 30 or something, so almost 2,000 years, and he comes back in a couple of days. Let's see. And Kyle was killed over ice cream. That is, I, I know, not this episode, I think last episode maybe. That... Yeah, because cause he liked vanilla. That, yeah, interesting choice. That's, it's definitely a choice. That's, no one can deny that that was a choice. And Colleen talks Danny th through Bakudo and his other students. So the opening of this episode, when they wake up in the bed and the windows, that wasn't a dream. I could have sworn that was supposed to be, yeah. And... You know, at first we think Bakudo represents yet another group involved in the fight with the hand, but you know, ultimately they are they are also hand, just not quite. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that maybe maybe Gao is left hand and their right hand, and we see that Bakudo has people listening in on Danny, and Bakudo is going to read the transcript of the call. Colleen knows they're keeping secrets from Danny. It is starting to look a lot like a cult. Danny finds out where the off-limit 
areas are and goes. That really is like you gotta love. Like I I get it. They're they're young and they're they're like wow, this is the best place I've ever been. So when this stranger comes in and asks. Are there any places you're not allowed to, you know, they're not like, why do you want to know that? You know, no, they're just like, oh, yeah, sure. If you go right over there, I mean, they talk about, oh, they buried a lot of bodies there and it smells bad. So that's why we're not allowed to go. But, I oh, hey, hey, are you, are you going over there already? And Gao can tell Danny is looking at her through the monitor that... I gotta admit that was that was really really cool. Just you know, he goes to look at wow, it's Gao, and she like turns around and walks over, and they have a conversation if they've, as if they're face to face. Like when they filmed that, it almost must have been that like she had an earpiece. Yeah, like both of them had earpieces. You know, I don't think we can see both of his ears, so he had an earpiece in the ear that we can't see. And she's, you know, oh wait, actually we do see her, her whole thing. Maybe, maybe it's not an earpiece, maybe she can just hear the sound from above. And that's how they, because it looked like they were having a conversation. It didn't look like some kind of pre-recorded or anything. I, I appreciate that they took the, they made the extra effort to make it look. You know, it's not just that, oh, he, he triggered a previous recording of, no, no, no. She, she can hear what he says. This is, yeah. And Colleen claims Gao is rogue hand, sinister hand. She and Bakudo are regular hand, overcomplicating it further. Not gonna lie, I am invested in the whole Bakudo thing. And Colleen claims the monks brainwashed Danny. And Bakudo offers Harold a partnership instead of, you know, we're, we're not going to, like, threaten you and such. We're going to, it's going to be a partnership and offers him what he wants, a return to public life. And... Let's cool fight between Danny and Bakudo in the surveillance hub. And we find out that the mysterious man making throwing stars, beating up hot dog vendors, is Davos, Danny's childhood friend from Kunlun. I, I still don't understand why he was behaved. Did he... Was it was it as an easy way to get some money, maybe? I... Yeah, it was, it was just kind of weird. And why is he, like, intimidating the guy? Wasn't he still conscious when he was lying? And he's throwing... You know, it, I, th I think the hot dog vendor was conscious when, when Davos was throwing throwing stars. Or maybe, possibly not. But yeah. the hallway fight is cool. That's, I'm, I'm not sure I'm going to get tired of saying that uh, about Marvel Netflix shows. And pretty cool. Danny and Davos fighting the guards. Colleen opens the door for them and closes it behind them. And... I did not have Lawrence killed, which is technically correct, the very best kind of correct. There is someone we have to destroy. His name is Bakudo. And Davos wants Danny to protect Kunlun. And that brings us to the 11th episode, Lead Horse Back to Stable. And... I, I did like the flashback where Davos and Danny realized that Danny is the Iron Fist. So yeah, so far barely anything of consequence has happened this season. It's the first of the Marvel Netflix shows where that's true. At first people didn't believe Danny was Danny, then they did. The three briefly lost control of the company, then they got it back. I realize a strong argument could be made that the point here is the characters, the past, growth, both personal and in relationships. I personally find them to be incon too inconsistently written to get sufficiently invested in them that it makes up for how little plot progression there is. More than any of the other Marvel Netflix shows to come before this, this one really feels like they're just passing the time. They had to introduce Iron Fist before Defenders and give a little bit more on the hand because we really didn't find out very much about them in Daredevil Season 2. Or wait, no, wait, no. Scratch that. 
we did actually find out a bunch. Come come to think of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh I guess they didn't want him to just appear fully formed in in defenders. I Yeah. Maybe it's a Yeah, like a conceptual thing like they felt like, "Oh, we have to give every single one of them a, a show." I'm not saying they have to show the plane every single time, but I feel like there's been a lot of globe trotting back and forth in a very short amount of time. New York to China, then back to New York, New York to Japan, then back to New York. I think I'm feeling jet lag. How did Colleen get back to New York? Bakudo didn't fly her. He finds her again at her place. Pretty sure Danny didn't. Can she afford a last minute ticket? And Davos takes Danny to Claire and she fixes him up with her stapler. And Danny gets a Luke Cage shirt. I already paid for the pizza. So it's true, you're in the hand. Come on, Claire, don't bite the hand that feeds you. The arm, the ear. I know. I know Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles already made fun of them calling it the hand way back. Was I guess it was before 87, wasn't it? Because that was just the show. They'd already done comics before that where they, instead of the hand, it's the foot. And the, the you know, radioactive chemical doesn't just, you know, in, in Daredevil it's, you know, super senses, but in the... the then in uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it also m transforms these these turtles into you know. I get that, but I still can't help myself. It just it's it's easy to make fun of. The hand always comes first. That is that's not what I heard of as far as body parts that come first. And Colleen is strapped down. Bakudo, what the hell is this? It's a chair, Colleen. People sit in it. And one of Colleen's students gets too close to Colleen, so the latter takes her forehead to the student's nose and then engages in hand-to-hand -hand with the hand. I was legitimately not sure that she was going to be able to avoid being an unwilling blood donor. And we've, you know, we've seen them take blood from people before. That, that was, I guess, Gao's hand, and now Bakudo's hand is also doing it. That's a decent way of, like, saying, no, you know, Bakudo was lying. They are as bad as Gao's hand. That brings us to the second-to-last episode, Bar the Big Boss. And ward is scared harold will harold will kill him and joy certainly if joy dies the show will be joyless and don't let him bait you yes don't be baited into defending the honor of the people who just strapped you to a chair and tried to use you for blood for who knows how long Yeah, and, you know, Ward trying to get Joy out of there, and then Bakudo shows up. I, I did think that was kind of tense, and, yeah. Bakudo's men gun down Harold men, and he's like, I'm sorry about that, but no one pulls a gun on me. Now, go to the couch, all of you, relax, and I just want Joy to respond, I don't think all of us are going to fit on the couch, but I believe there are some chairs in the back. Before realizing that Bakuda only meant the Meachums, not the guards also. And and I want one of the guards to like sit and get comfortable and then look at Bakudo who's like And yeah. Then he realizes and stands up. Colleen and Davos comes to Danny's end come to Danny's aid. Why did Bakudo believe he'd come alone? He knows Danny isn't alone. He has a lot of people working for him. Surround the building with people with guns. 
Many hands make light work. Does he not have enough hands on hand? Colleen, we can help you. No, he's mine. I guess Danny hasn't watched very many martial arts movies. You're only as strong as your weapon. What matters is how you use your weapon. I guess that's the martial arts version of it's not the size of the ship, it's the motion in the ocean. He'll be the first lead of the hand to be arrested. Not a single other hand has had his hand in handcuffs, been handed to the police. And Davos kills Bakudo. An argument leads to an outright fight between Davos and Danny. I will admit, these are cool settings for fight scenes. We had the hallway, the lobby of the hotel, then the courtyard soaked in rain. Now this place, close to the courtyard. And I do kind of like the stuff between Harold and Ward in this episode. Trying to betray each other, get each other killed, ending up seemingly on the same side. And as he thinks he's about to die, Harold apologizes to Joy and tells Ward he's disappointed. He's like... I'm about to lose my life, and it hurts to talk. So I'll just say this. You never do anything right. Ward, meanwhile, calls his daddy a punk, and he's not. Not only when he's drunk. And... Yeah, you know, we see that DEA attack, you know, Colleen Dan and Danny, and... Yeah, that was, you know, and, and then in the finale we find out the the frame job which is legitimately clever you know jerry hogarth spells out how effective yeah final episode dragon plays with fire so claire gets jerry to help to go help danny we get another stanley r.i.p cameo you know a poster as clary claire and jerry clary jerry clary walk away from the camera. You see it on a on like a wall or something. And it was also kind of, you know, Claire walks up and she's like, uh, I have a message. I, I was told to give you this from, you know, so, and she's like, uh, five, five dollars is going to buy you two seconds of my time. <laughs> I swear every single time Jerry makes an appearance on the show, she makes it so much better. Can she, can they have her appear in every episode of season two? And I mean, she, I'm almost 100%. She she almost has to appear on the Defender since she has a relationship with Danny and Jessica Jones. It yeah, I I would be extremely surprised if there isn't some point where they they go to her for for legal help or maybe yeah, like like a a file on someone or something. I have to admit this you know we have a, a legitimately good finale setup. First, there's a break in and entering at Bakudo's place, and then the Rand Corp. And Gao tells Danny Harold kills his parent, killed his parents, and that he has to kill him to become the Iron Fist. Colleen says he shouldn't, but she should. And Claire goes, Jesus, is there any version of this where we don't kill anyone? And Harold can convince Joy. I appreciate that sometimes they write her to be smart. Women are just as capable of being smart as men. And Ward tells Danny to stay away, and then you know Harold hits him with the with the golf club. Why do you keep making me do things like this? He is now quoting directly from the handbook: "How to be abusive to people close to you." Maybe that means something else in Kunlun, but in New York, guys with guns is the opposite of clear. So what you're really saying, Claire, is we are not clear. We are very not clear. So unless you're bulletproof, no, you're thinking of Luke Cage, a show I could be watching right now. And yeah, you know, I at, at about that point in the episode, I figured by the end of this episode, Harold will be dead. Danny will be able to summon the Iron Fist more reliably so he can use it in the Defenders. Guns. Shit. I think what Colleen means to say is guns and knives and what have you, starting some shit. And Danny swings in through the window, Iron Fist a glowing and, and in front of it. Just, yeah. That was that was very swashbuckle pirate movie, and I hope there's more of it in Defenders in season two because that and Iron Fist season two. I know there's only one season of Defenders. 
And yeah, Danny fighting people with guns, facing a challenge. I really appreciate you know so much. Way too much of this show has has this season has just been Danny faces some some people with martial arts, and he defeats them. You know, there's yeah. I, I wish they had introduced the element of him going up against people with guns much earlier in the season, and just have like some times where he has to get a bit more creative or such. That is what they asked creative thing. I do think they did a better job of this um the the setups for martial arts in this season were more varied than the ones between Daredevil and Hand in in season 2 of Daredevil. Overall, you know, Daredevil has the better action, but there were bit too many times where it's just some, yeah. They face each other head on, apply directly to the forehead, and just, yeah. And the, the areas also weren't quite memorable enough, in my opinion. And it was cool when Danny punches the, the floor with the iron fist, and, you know, there's a... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's a like a shock wave, and the rooftop scene legitimately tense. And Ward shoots Harold, who f you know flops over the the edge. And I just wanted like or some kind of sound effect there. And you know they have him cremated. I have to admit, when, when they're staying there and they're talking, you know, I didn't realize right away that it was cremation, only when Jerry showed up and said, well, when have I ever missed a good cremation? You know, and they're, they're staying there and they're talking about, like, you know, you don't have to be like your father, you know, and I'm just like, remember when Danny pulled a gun on, or, or Ward pulled a gun on Danny, then Danny grabbed the gun, pointed it directly at his face, mock executed him. Also, did they remember to cut off the head? And then I realized, oh, cremation, okay. If he comes back from that, that would kind of be, like, just, wow. But, yeah. But, yeah, I appreciate the emotional honesty. I'm not sure I 100% buy that Ward and Danny would be that comfortable. with. It. Yeah, it's just, I really appreciate it, because Ward starts out like a jerk, and, you know, he deals with this, the, the pill addiction and this whole thing, and then he grows to be a better human being, you know, it's not a bad arc, it just feels very forced, it, it feels like, you know, earlier on, they're like, well, he has to be a jerk for a little bit longer, and then now it's like, oh crap, he's still kind of a jerk, we have to make him not be a jerk. And Claire tells Danny and Colleen they need therapy, and it, I, I did kind of like, okay, I say this as a friend, you two have a lot in common. That's not a good thing, because they're like, oh, thanks. I really, really want Claire to do a way too honest, like, ah, let's see. Now, now I, I guess it's the best man who gives a speech at a wedding, isn't it? It can't be the the ah what are the what are they called again the top bridesmaid I, f I forget what that's called but yeah like I would love for her to be like okay so you know clinking against the glass I have been asked repeatedly not to give a speech here but you know me I'm honest so when I first when when Joe first met Jill I have to admit. I thought, if the two of them end up together, that is going to be just complete misery for them, for their families, their pets, and standing here today, seeing you about to be wed and, and marry for, I promise I wouldn't cry, be together for the rest of your lives, I just want to say... It is not too late. You haven't said I do yet. And then, you know, someone comes and pulls, you know, yanks her away. Well, yeah. But, but yeah, the, and, you know, uh, 
Danny and Colleen agree to, you know, yeah, Danny says, I, I have to go to Kunlun, and, and Colleen's like, I'm, I'm gonna miss you, and then he's like, oh, I was hoping we'd go together. That would also be a hilarious time for her to be like, oh, I don't know, I feel like it's a little early in the relationship for us to go on such a long journey together. I do really, really hope that he warned her that they were gonna have to, like, climb a mountain to get there, and that that wasn't, like, you know, just a, yeah. And we see that Davos, Joy, and Gao will be working together. And I do definitely have to say, the idea of Gao still working for the Hand, I, I can, yeah, I, I buy that. The idea of Davos or Joy, Davos or Joy joining the Hand, nope, that is 100%, I, I really don't see, if, if you, if you want to make the case of why, for one or both, either, either or both, you know, put in the comments, I'll, I'm willing to debate it, but I really, I did not personally see what, yeah. And there's some dead hand at Kunlun, and Kunlun is gone. Danny says he should have been there, lights up Iron Fist, and the season is over. And that's, I mean, I get it. It's easier to draw a dragon, not, not saying it's the easiest thing in the world, but it is, it's less, it's more cost effective to draw a dragon on some comic book pages than it is to, you know, either, either animate it or build a practical on a Netflix budget, but it really does just feel like, you know, there's that one part where we see it for like two seconds on the, uh, that was the roof, right, where he's, he's like seeing two red lights above him and they're like the red eyes of the the dragon which name escapes me at the moment I just yeah um I think yeah so worst to best I love all of these except for this season so the the season the Marvel Netflix seasons leading up to and including this one worst to best I'm Fist season one Daredevil season two Luke Cage season one Daredevil season one and Jessica Jones season one so Critic quotes: Too little action, bad action. The choreography is meh, but you can and you can tell that the actor playing Danny only learned it ten minutes before filming fights. Like, how do you? I I I'm okay that it's not quite as good as the Daredevil ones. You know, they they really, you know, they focused a lot on it, but it's just not. Uh, yeah. Unlike the equally arrogant Tony Stark, Bruce Wayne, or Stephen Strange, Danny has no redeeming features. The audience is given no reason to like this unfunny hero we're just expected to like to because he's the titular character. Too much like Batman Begins, but in a bad way. The premise of the story is fascinating, but the execution is a disaster of a white savior wielding a mythical Asian superpower representing an Asian cult, having an Asian fetish, living in a world where somehow most villains are Asians. The amount of cliches and confused portrayals of Asian culture is also astonishing. Its target audience is the manga-reading white supremacist who thinks his katana from eBay will help him score an Asian girlfriend. Once you get past the cringeworthy racial issues, be prepared to be caught in the confusion of ever-shifting characters. Every 20 minutes or so, of the runtime has each character roll the dice and take on a different personality or moral stance. Love or hate, alliance or betrayal, calm or anger, friend or mortal enemy are all interchangeable here, making it difficult to root for any part of the show. Is Kunlun Hammer or Hell? Is Rand Enterprise doing good or evil? Is Annie an enlightened savior or just a rich, spoiled brat? Iron Fist is a work that makes you appreciate films that have consistently flat characters. That is, yeah, I... I one of my biggest problems with this whole season is how completely I, I I wanted to get into the characters. I don't want to hate something that I'm watching. And I guess, I'm, I'm not sure I would say I hate it, but very, very low rating compared. It's, it's the first, you know, Marvel Netflix thing that isn't amazing. So, but, yeah, uh, I guess uh, if I had to give this season uh, a rating, I would say 5 out of 10. You know, yeah, I really wanted to get into the characters, but they're just, they're all over the place. It just, and I've, I've watched a lot of shows where characters over time will change who they're allied with. But, you know, for example, Prison Break, it doesn't 
usually just happen from one episode to another, or within a scene or something. It happens over time. But yeah, like, you know, over the five seasons of Prison Break, some of the characters who really don't get along later do get along and such. And I, yeah, I felt like it was largely earned, you know. And then in this, like, I don't know, I mean, maybe they wanted more than you could make credible in just 13 episodes. And certainly, I mean, the other shows, th there is some, like, you know, changing of alliances and such. But it's not as, it, yeah, it's not quite like this. It's not, yeah. And, yeah, another critic quote. A sense of place. Well, two places, actually. You'd think a show with a main character who has arrived in New York City from a monastery in the high mountains of Tibet would avail itself to exotic locales. No. It's an office building, a small dojo, a secret compound that looks more like a dorm quad at Vassar and every vacant lot in New York. Even when they do go somewhere, in this case China, it looks more like Red Hook and the entire episode takes place inside a warehouse. Here's an idea. How about a flashback to the monastery that doesn't take place in a small clay walled room? Only once do they create something imaginative, an underground cage fighting community that lasts all of 10 minutes of screen time. I'm telling you, if I didn't know better, I'd say this had lo the location budget of a Hallmark film. So, um, I think I've said everything that I had to say and that wasn't said really well by someone else uh, again links in the description box yeah um like i said i didn't hate the show i just i wish it had been better and i am hoping season two is better i've heard some people say that you know yeah second season it's is much much better um oh right i guess i could just really briefly let's see so rotten tomatoes and I win fist. And yeah, season one got twenty percent from from critics. Season two got fifty five percent. That it's still rotten, but it's thirty five percent better. That is yeah, yeah, twenty percent from critics and seventy two percent from audience. Despite some promising moments, Iron Fist is weighed down by an absence of momentum and originality. Yeah. And let's see the... Uh, I guess I could... Metacritic. Um, does it make sense to go... I get... Sometimes I really love the, the Metacritic search. So when I typed in Iron Fist, the first thing is a PC game from 2014, which doesn't have enough scores to no rating. An iOS game from 2009, again, no rating. Tank Force Domination Iron Fist Commando. Why would it bring me that before Marvel's Iron Fist? Yeah, uh, four iOS games. 2009, 2014, and two of them from 2013, before Marvel's Iron Fist. Like, gee, I wonder which would have more interest to people looking up reviews. Anyway, um, so, 37 for the critics and 5.8 for the, for the users. So that is also a bit lower. And, yeah, 27 critics, 14 mixed, 13 negative, 0 positive. And... Yeah, so, I, yes, I have high, I, I do have hopes, I guess not high, I have hopes that season two will be better, and I am trying to focus on the, the, you know, Defenders might be good, and it is only eight episodes, so even if it's bad, it's not gonna take an absolute eternity to get through, and I mean, you know, of the four defenders i really love three of them so that is you know maybe danny's character i i don't think that uh i think his name is finn jones i do not think he's a bad actor i think he does the best he can honestly i'd say basically everyone does the best they can with what they're given 
and you know certainly I know that da David Wenham is much better like you know he's also kind of ridiculous at 300 but there it's called for you know and I th I'm pretty sure he's appeared in some stuff where he isn't completely ridiculous but yeah anyway that is it for this video so I intend to record a different video tomorrow but otherwise if you're just here for the Marvel Netflix videos Defenders one week from now so catch it at some point in the future or in the past if I invent a time machine <laughs>